Hi guys, David Texas here, and what you're looking at is what I call a Fender Stratocaster. This is the... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful Stratocaster. The finish on it is just fantastic. Uh, I love the color of the pickguard. The head is common, you know, American made the head. Maple neck, and it's one of those pure maple necks, it's not one of those uh, colored ones, just pure, pure maple color, right? No grains on it, it's just pure, and the neck is just fast as can be. Now, it's in here for a setup, for one of the free setups that I do, what I'm doing right now, to show you these guitars, free setups. But, it's also in here because these frets are sharp as motherfuckers. God damn it. I mean, they are just sharp, sharp. Up and down this neck. I mean, they are sharp. They just cut you. Just barely run the finger over it. Like, wow. So I can imagine his surprise when he played it. Now, he bought it used. But it's like new condition, guys. And whoever let this out the door should have stopped it. And, uh, you know, worth these frets because even down here it's even worse. But they didn't, uh, they didn't finish off the frets, basically. And they're way outside the uh, neck where the binding nail should be. And I don't know what they're thinking was. I mean, to do a beautiful guitar like this and then let this slip by is just insane. Because, brother, some are worse than others. You know, the downside's worse than the top. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, uh, Get my little hand files out. Those special little bitty ones you've seen. First of all, I'm gonna take these strings off like I always do. Whoops, wait a minute. <laughs> I forgot, this also has locking tuners. But this thing is absolutely, positively a beautiful, beautiful guitar. There's no, there's no, there's no fault on it whatsoever you got it so let's go through it and cut these away and like I always do I cut these at the 12 frets so I get a good wind up to throw away later on got me now this is uh, set up the way he wants it single in no wrap which is what I'll duplicate. It's obviously he does not do alternate tunings. Or if he does, he's very careful about it. More careful than most people. But anyway, that's what I'll give him. You know, that's what he wants. That's what will be on his guitar. No problemo. So, let's get the rest of these strings out of here. I've lost them on the floor now. So on the shop floor, we're ready to get somebody. And I think it's a notorious G string. <laughs> the ones that really bite your ass. I got bit not long ago by a G string. Put a nice little hole in my finger. And of course, as usual, it was from a dirty old set of strings that I was cutting off the guitar. And it decided to give me a nice little spot inspection. It's like, oh goody. So, Squeeze it open with my finger, pour some alcohol down in there, some iodine, and that stopped that. The swelling and the redness went away real quick. And it's just being stabbed, you know, and drawing blood from that G string. That did it. And it was dirty, it was old, it was rusty, and it nailed me. And I was not paying attention. As much as I've done this, you would think I have better sense. But sometimes, you know, it's hard to walk and chew gum at the same time. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, cousin? Okay, so. I also want to send a shout out to the guitarologist. I've just been watching his shows lately, and I love his stuff. Really nice guy interesting stuff that he does very interesting with amps and such it's like wow cool 
Now, I don't do any modification on the amps I work on. I just don't do it because people are just too goddamn picky. They want something done to it, you know, to improve it or change it or add something to it that they didn't already have originally. And what I tell them is, go back and buy a different amp. <laughs> but the guitarologist, he will absolutely turn a uh, sun tanning machine into a guitar amp. <laughs> I've seen him do it. <laughs> so anyway, we have got to get these things done. This has been here a while, and it's simply because I've got so many guitars I'm working on. Let's wrap that into a nice little circle. Make sure no one gets poked with it, best I can. Okay, now let's get back to this guitar. Well, there's several ways to do this, guys. The quick way is to take my uh, little uh, uh, sanding block and go over this, you know, down the sides. And uh, what's going to happen is it'll take off that excess that hangs over the stuff you feel that grabs you. But what it will not do is make those ends, you know, soft again. I got to go back to my itty bit of files. They kind of look like this, right? You see that? Okay, a little bitty files. They kind of look like that, as well as my three-sided one-side file to round those tops off. Is what it does. It definitely takes the sides off. The only thing you do about that is take these little tiny files look about like this all right and just go over each one of them on top just like that <laughs> well kind of sort of like that in the meantime mm, i get my big old feet out of the way we're going to see about doing this real quick and see what it's going to take to uh, get that outside off there and it shouldn't take much that should come off pretty readily Okay, so hang in there while we do this. And what I need to do is take this chuck out of here and just hold this guitar. And this is going to sand about a 45 degree angle. Now normally I take the nut off this thing, but in this case, no. Nah. <laughs> that's pretty slick guys that has taken off that excess bit of tang on almost every one of these now a few of them still have that tang hanging I can still feel it and that I'm going to take this little tiny file here and knock them down in the meantime I'm going to take it on the other side of this okie dokie knock down this other side's problems. And it's not taking much to get these off there. There we go. Nope, not yet. Like I said, the bottom is worse than the top. And I've got to get those off there. And get those smoothie and right through here is the worst. The thing is, it barely takes off these parts. You know, it files them down. But oh man, there's so many just sticking out and over. It's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's twelve of these. God almighty, twelve of these are still up high. Now, 
I can't get up here on the first fret. That's not going to happen. Okay, so there's 12 of these that are still high. And I can't get up here on this top, these top frets because the nut's in the way. But these ones in the middle and the, towards the bottom, until I get to the pickup, that I can get out of there. Okay, and it's not going to do any damage to that fretboard at all. As long as you hear that noise, you know you're cutting the fret. Aha, we're getting there guys. Now I feel one. Uh, that's why I didn't feel before. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, ah oh, crap, <laughs> still feel them all, <laughs> it's not got them down yet, so a few more passes with my block and we'll get that down to a proper perspective and then we'll come back with my little tiny files and go over the edges just about like this. To knock that top sharp spot off just like that. You know, didn't take much, just get, you know, just round it over. Okay, so hang in there, guys, so I'll uh, finish doing my block and get that out of the way, and uh, we'll go for that little hand job. <laughs> the hand job work on this thing. Yep. Now I'll zoom in real close. I think that's about as close as I can get to show you this, but. I'll show it to you as, close, as best I can while I'm doing with this hand file. And why it takes so long to do this is like it takes forever. <laughs> but you know, working on guitars is my thing, you know. And we want to hear what this thing sounds like when we put the strings back on it and play it. Alright? You can play it too. And the nut on this is plastic, but they cut it just right. I mean, it's just big enough to accept the strings. Okay, it's got a shoe. Let me show that headstock again. Hold on. There we go. That's a good shot of that baby. Look at that. The color is just beautiful. Make sure you get that file out of the way before you put these back down again. And you scratch them. You don't want to hurt this baby. That's always the one thing I do. I make sure to clean this little mat up anytime the guitars go on it. Make sure to shake anything off. Especially if I've been soldering, because that stuff will scratch something quicker than you can blink. Oh yeah, that plus uh, cutting the nibs off of uh, guitar frets. Wow, will that ever teach you a lesson about keeping track of them? Ouchy, ouchy, and scratchy, scratchy. <laughs> now, good thing was my guitar that I scratched all the hell up. Not a good thing, but it's just good as mine, not somebody else's. Uh, the bad thing is, I've stepped on those before. Now, it wasn't because I left them on the floor. It's because my big old clod hoppers picked one up in the shop before I got a chance to pick it up or use, run the magnet. I, was, use, I had this huge magnet I used to pick up those parts with. And before I had a chance to do that, I stepped on one. It stuck in the sole of my tennis shoe. And sure enough, I come walking in. I don't scratch the floor up, thank goodness. But I walk in, it comes out of the shoe, and here I am barefoot in my bath, walking across the shower, and yo! Man, does that ever hurt. And you take two or three steps, trying to you know, keep them falling over. <laughs> and each one is agony. The nibs off of fret ends are killers. You know, they're killer dealers. Okay, enough bullshit, let's cut away. Okay, it only took four more passes to get that uh, tang out of the way of the guitar. But, it doesn't ever do it 100%. You still have to go in there, that little tiny file I showed you, the little one with the red handle. And you use that outside edge on it, as well as the uh, edge itself. Right, as you can see this or not, this little bitty one from Stumac. To get those little nibs off there and to round off the little edge. Now to do that, I can't see it just, <laughs> it's just too small. So what I do, I put on my geek hat, 
the one with the light and the magnifying glass <laughs> so I can look like a total nerd alright that kinda looks like this <laughs> so it magnifies those so I can see them perfectly and I don't end up scratching up that wood all the shit also I've got a magnifier on my new swing arm lamp but I got so many amps around me right now I can't even get to it it's just uh, <laughs> my bench is just not going to get there because there's too many amps in the way to get close to it which I should swing it around change directions but not at the moment let's go ahead and work on this first with my geek hat on turn my little miners light on make sure it's still working and see if I'm in the frame no I'm not thank goodness okay so I can go in here and look at this very closely and find out which one of these little buggers I'm running my fingers against and still coming up with some you know nastiness like this one right here Like I said, it didn't take much to get rid of this shit. Ha! Now that's gone. So, I've got like five of those I still have to do with that little tiny file. To get them, uh, you know, as close as humanly possible to that that wood. Now, here's the drawback, guys. Those uh, tangs will come in and out as the weather changes, as things expand and contract and stuff. So when it's nice and hot out, uh, they're gonna probably feel some of it. Not much, because I'm going as deep as I can into the wood, but I can't go beyond the wood plane itself, the level of the wood. I have to dig into the uh, guitar's uh, body to do that with. I just can't do that. Cannot be done. It's not smart to do either because you end up uh, putting a little lip down there and get something underneath that fret and have it pop out on you. Well, okay, those are done. Uh, and we're talking about the tangs have been done, knocked down. But the top end of the frets are sharp now. And that means coming in with this little jewel tool here. <laughs> I thought I was going to use it. There it is. This little jewel tool here is a three-sided file, but only one side has serrations on it. So I can get in there and knock down little corners on these things. And round off that, or uh, get that sharpness off the top. I think I'm going to switch files here and go back to my little tried and true one. And I don't think you can see this, but if you can see it, you can see how it rounds off that top completely. And it gets rid of that little sharpness that you feel. And it doesn't take much. No, this little file it doesn't. So we'll get that nice little edge they left on here gone. I don't see how people can do this standing back away from the frets themselves. Uh, it sounds like somebody's got to have words with me so hang in there guys <laughs> let me just keep sending me messages hang in there well I'm getting further and further getting down the neck on this on the bad side of it the good size so <laughs> the lesser bad side still gonna be worked on but I tell you what guys the part that's no fun about this and makes it you know just damn near impossible is that you got to be so low you have to have your head so close to the uh to the fret itself to see it because you're using the uh, blade side of this this oval shape using the blade side of it still serrated 
to get down there and not take a lot of the wood away and make the problem even worse by removing wood around the fret tang. You want to remove the tang, not the wood around it. Huh. Not easy thing to do. Of course, then it comes the polish up on the top to get that top part, you know, not sharp. Wow, I took some skin off. But uh, some is worse than others. You can see it and you feel it. And it's just that they didn't knock down, you know, the edge like they should have. Like, you know, I'm looking here at some of the work I've done already. And the, uh, you see that 35 degree angle that I left on the edge of the frets that should have been originally, okay? And this side has just got some long tangs. It's 35 degrees on the neck, on the uh, end of the fret, but the tangs are just extra long. You can still feel them. So, uh, it means bending over or getting down to it. So I'm going to switch chairs here. I usually work on my shop stool, but uh, it's killing my neck. <laughs> oh, man. I gotta get down low and level. I gotta get down low and level. Get down low, get down. Get down, down. <laughs> oh, jeez. But if you got the right gear to work with, then it makes things much easier. And I should have switched chairs much earlier. My neck would be hurting right now. Unfortunately, my other chair, which is what my customers use to sit in and play their guitars. I don't know if you've seen it in all of my videos. Happens to be seating a Fender amp right at the moment. Now, there's no sharp sides on it that will just tear the crud out of my nice stool, but I still have to be careful not to rip it all to shit if I pull it back up again, which I will be doing later. And as you've heard, I've been working on this lately. My little Fender Super that has so many problems and I keep finding other ones. I'm going through and I'm testing these amplifiers and it never fails that I find something new that's popped up is wrong with them. Normally that takes place once you uh, put on the Variac and power it up some. But in this one's case, just testing it with my little testing tool, I found several other Capacitors that are bad, similar resistors that are bad. It's like, damn it. You know, what else can go on? <laughs> but like I said, it burns. So, when you burn your stuff up, you gotta expect there's gonna be a problem with it. Lots of problems. And according to my little tester, it took out every one of the resistors in the doghouse. Not one was left alive. So that little fire must have really been a doozy. And probably a lot worse than my friend told me about. The owner of it. Okay, now we're down low and dirty down here. <laughs> and make less wear and tear on good old Dave's neck. And of course I still have my Poindexter hat on. That I can still see with. And magnify. That's the trick in here. Magnify. And don't take the wood away. Take away the metal stuff. So hang in there guys. While I stick my face in there. And start taking the uh, metal down. Now the good part about this. Is when you are using these files. Like you know, like such and such. Right? This one. Where it's wide body. And this is for it's you know, edge. Right? The uh, tang itself is higher than the wood itself so you're not taking off any wood you're just taking off the tang you just get in there and file that down but then comes the fun part you'll feel the tops of these they're still sharp as sons of guns and they're what's the word for it like grating so i could actually take that nice smooth 30 smooth 35 degree angle like it's kind of like this and roll it backwards so that string doesn't go, can it? You know? Oh man. And then smooth up the fret. And the tricky part is getting about this far away with your face right into it, your nose right up against it. So you can see what you're doing with these magnifiers. 
Otherwise, you're just wasting your time and you could have ended up following up too much. And wow, did they overdo this one, as far as, you know, screwing it up with the fret jelly did. Well, okay, we got it done. Each one of those little frets has a nice little hump in it. They're nice and smooth again. Yeah, that's what we want to feel. <laughs> of course, you can feel the fret itself, but no more tearing at your skin. No more sharp, barbed edges. And that makes life much more fun to play these guitars. Okie dokie. Now, one thing I wanted to mention uh, when doing these guitars is that if you're ever going to do your guitar and take the strings off, do not leave the truss rod under tension for more than a day. You follow me? It's well worth the trouble to uh, relax that truss rod and bring it back up to tension after you put the strings back on or before you just, just before you put the strings back on it. Put it back to where it was. Just keep track of how many turns you make on it you'll know. Very, very simple. But what you don't want is for that truss rod to be uh, under tension the entire time for like a couple of weeks while there's no strings on your uh, <laughs> there's no strings on your guitar. It's more than likely to back bow on you, especially ones with uh, uh, very supple necks like this little fender here. But this will not be without strings for more than a day because they're going right back on there. And then we'll do a free setup on it. But this is done, guys. Nice, smooth frets again. Nothing to grab or bind his fingers. And uh, just take a lot of work. A couple hours worth of work, and she's finished. Yay! And we'll get a chance to hear it play in just a bit, and then hear him play it for you. So hang in there. Well, we got all those nasty sharp fret ends taken care of. It's nice and smooth again across the top and the sides. The way it should have been done when they first came to the guy. Of course, I think he, again, I think he said he bought this uh, used. Uh, I'm not really sure what year this is. I'm not gonna take the neck off to find out. The funny thing is, this guitar has the tiniest openings for the truss rod. You can see that or not. I don't know if you can see it or not. Try to take a look at this. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to arrange this a little bit different. You can see deep inside this thing is real deep and it's a small opening and once you get past the opening the truss rod holder uh, hole for the downer and it expands it gets bigger so it's almost like you have to dig a hole in it you know get that rod to move but I found the right one got that set up the way I want it everything's cool and now it's time to put strings back on it and call the guy up. Okay, so we just got this locked down tuners. So I'm gonna pull it through. And I'll show you how you lock them down. Pull that string tight. I'm gonna do a counter wrap with it. Like that. Up and under. Like this. And pull it tight to the body, to the shaft, and then it, give it a few turns to get it go tight on me. All right, now we're going to choke down on this lock I'm going to cut that string away now this is how I do locking tuners if you want to take advantage of the lock now I'll cut it a little longer so if he comes in once it's shorter I can always cut it shorter on this guitar all right Anyway, that's the way I do it. Bring it in, kind of wrap it, bring it over and under. You can see, I hope you can see some of this. All right? Pull it tight in the body. Come back, 
just a tiny bit, counter wrap it, and bring it under that other string and pull it tight. And then you can get a couple of twists on this thing while keeping that tight. And you don't even end up with a full wrap on it. You end up with like a, oh, like a half wrap, maybe three quarter wrap. It depends on what kind of gap you left it. This one may have a full wrap. Yeah, it looks a little too much. That won't hurt. Let's do this, guys. Let's bring it back out again. Now, if I break the string, I'll just pull one from their set. But I gave that too much, too much lead, just too much. And I should have gotten it tighter. Okay, so we're coming in. Pull it tight. Bring it around counter wrap it bring it under the same string and pull it tight like that and then start my twist and that way it shouldn't have that many wraps on it damn it that's still going It shouldn't be a full wrap, it should be like a half. Right, once I come back around, which is doing right now. Okay, so now it's doing it. That was the right amount that time. So I'm gonna tighten down the uh, lock. Finger tight, come back, cut that a little longer than normal. Of course, get it out of the way of everything. Next string, you can still see this, you can. Let's see why my hands are in the way. So I'll bring it through, all right? Pull it tight. Come back here and counter wrap it, all right? Pull that tight. Come over, come, come under. Don't let it flip over like that did. <laughs> come under and pull it tight and start your wrap. And you should end up like a half a wrap that you can tie it down with your tune with your locks. And let's see if I get half a wrap. Yeah, that's about right. There it comes around. Okay, so that's coming around. And you notice they're all pointing the same direction with these thinner gauges. Damn it. That's being stubborn. Okay. Oh, baby. So we got three up, three to go. And these are usually harder to work with because you got to go under this tree coming up. Sometimes that locks jams up there high. Okay, well, I think you've seen enough of that. So I'm going to cut away and uh, open up this uh, shop. It's kind of hot in here today. It's like 70, so hang in there. Well, we got all six strings on and quick wrapped uh, like they are for the walking tuners. Next thing to do is to uh, go ahead and tune this baby up. We're going to set it up and intonate it. All righty. Like I said, I left a lot of uh, tail end or whiskers on those uh, each of these strings in case he wants them long or short where he wants to do in case he has to do an alternate tuning and there's not enough wrap there for him. I left him some, you know, bud space. And uh, just a tip, if you ever have walking tuners and you're trying to put a string through like a, like a, uh, uh, well, a 46 E string, right? The uh, low E and it's not going through it's, it's like, wow, <laughs> it's not too big.
take something and uh, first of all loosen up your lock mechanism in the back and then tap it just go you know with your finger hard on top of the uh, shaft itself and it may just drop down the, the the lock mechanism sometimes when it's humid like it is today and today is a perfect example of crazy Texas weather it's 71 degrees outside February 28th 100% humidity it's raining and uh, you know a week ago it's 20s it's like damn <laughs> of course tomorrow not to be the weather man but let's see what's going to do tomorrow uh well it's going to be that way all the rest of the week up until uh well a week from now so we're going to be in the, the high 60s and uh be sunny so i got a couple of days i can actually do some glue ups i want to do on a couple of special guitars but uh that's what we got to deal with now next back to this uh we're going to uh, tune it up, get some time to adjust, and then uh, let you hear what it sounds like. Yes, yeah, so hang in there. Well, we got it all tuned up. And I know you want to hear the voice of this guitar, so let me do this. Let me cut away, and uh, I'll play a few bars on it, and let you hear what it sounds like on all these pickups. And... Uh, you know, I've heard it before when it just came in the shop, and it's beautiful, but you're going to really dig this, so hang in there. Okay, this is on the neck pickup. And yes, it's going out of tune, so just hang in there. the neck pickup. bite to that back pickup guys okay so anyway we're gonna let next time you hear it you'll be hearing the owner play it and uh, get a chance to hear what he says about the uh, fret job we did on it and how much smoother they are and rounded off those uh, nasty edges are like they should have done originally so Next, you'll hear him play, so hang in there, guys. All right, well, I found this capo in the bunch, you know, my little roller, which I haven't used, but uh, let's give it a shot, see how well that works out. Pretty slick little invention, I think. Just pull up that spring and put it on, and now you can actually roll <laughs> your capo. And it's working. Okay, so what I want to do, guys, I want to get my little feeler gauge and see what kind of relief I've got on this. I should be short, I think. I think it's going to have enough relief on it. So I'm getting these things have to be so high to clear that uh, fret buzz issue. Let's see, let's see, let's see what kind of relief I've got. Capo it, clip it at the 17th. And see what we got coming in. There it is right there. Okay, so, whoopsie, so what we're going to do, get the capo on the first fret, I'm going to do the 17th, and then try to get underneath it, and it's not, uh-uh, there's not a clearance there, no clearance, clearance, <laughs> so what I've got to do is adjust that neck 
and get that right. How are you today? Good, how you doing? Excellent. Can you get your fenders? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, where am I? Okay, stop the camera. All right. Okay, we got his uh, little American Fender Beauty, Beauty guitar set up for him. Got the uh, frets all uh, rounded over where they belong. Introduce yourself. I'm Robert Scott. Okay, Robert, and which band do you play for? I play with a lot of singer songwriters. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, let's hear a little bit of your music. <laughs> Feels good? Is that yeah, for you? Yeah, cool. It feels great. The address is nice. Alrighty. Yeah, well guys, any questions, give me a holler. Dave in Texas. Bye. Say bye. Bye, buddy. <laughs>